hi guys welcome back to the channel welcome if you are new i'm stacy and tonight because it is nighttime it is it is what is it 8 40 you guys we are going to paint this little guy i got these art boards in the crescent art boards in one of my um art boxes i'm pretty sure it was the um the palatful packs one and um, I came with three and I didn't know what I was going to do with them. So I decided to go ahead and draw out this bird on this one. And then we have the other one. I went ahead and sketched out a hummingbird, which is going to be the next video. Can't wait. Super excited for that one. Um, but for tonight, because this is a splashy, this is going to be a splashy real time. Um, Pause if you want to, get your paints, pop up the reference photo, do your own little sketch, and we will go ahead and get rolling. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know how much water this can take, but here's hoping it's a lot. I have my Princeton Neptune round number 18, my big monster, out to do the background. Now I've done this guy in the past and he turned out super cool. And then I lost, I, I completely lost the original artwork. I have no idea where it went. I have a picture of it, which I printed. I'll show you. See, it turned out so cute. And I cannot for the life of me find the original piece. So I'm recreating him cause I can. I think he's wonderful. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and dampen, our, and I think I have like, is there something in this? It's a little gray, it's a little purpley. Get a little, oops, a little swooshy wash. There we go, that's better. Yeah, it had some purple paint in it. I apparently didn't wash it very good the last time I used it, which is par for the course sometimes. I use a, um, this big brush and don't rinse it all the way and put it put it to the side while I'm working and forget to clean it all the way. I rinse it sort of, but it's it's advisable <laughs> to clean your brushes well after using them, especially the thirsty ones because they will hold paint and pigment. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm looking to have like just a shine on here. You guys see the shine in the lights? You see my lights. <laughs> so that the the paint will like bleed and swoosh around. I want it to be, um, let's see, put this upside down. This is, these are my colors for my mostly M Grand palette. I have a couple Sennelier colors in here, uh, as I state almost every video, but Today we are going to use M. Graham's Quinn Rose, which is this one. And we are just going to swoosh it down and let it, let it do its thing. And there are bunches of pink flowers in the background. I forgot to pop the reference photo up. That was kind of silly that but I want it to be like light and oh what is happening hold on my light's freaking out okay sorry the light changed um my big my big light I think I, I've had it on too too long today um I did a bunch of product photos for the website and the shop and I did some um uh yeah, I had it in the in the back bedroom where my setup is for for all of that. And I don't think she really appreciates my <laughs> I don't think she appreciates me right now, you guys. So um yeah, I had to change out the lights a little bit. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Alright. I don't want this to be all pink like that. Let's block. We're gonna block. And your watercolors will dry lighter. I don't know if this board is going to hold pigment. So. Let 
I'll just lay down some color like that. I'm kind of digging the yellow. It's um as a yellow, is it? Yeah. Um, which is a beautiful, beautiful color. All of the M. Graham colors are gorgeous. Um, I might be a little biased because M. Graham is the first um, watercolor that I really, professional watercolor that I've ever owned. So, yeah. Laying out that for more. There, I'm kind of just let that be sloppy wet. Let me get spot there. I'm doing a little scrubbing in to lighten up those splotches that I'm not thrilled about. Let's see. The board is bowing, so it's going to run off the page a bit, which is fine. I don't mind. Can you guys tell it? Yeah, it's bowed quite a lot. A trick you can do, and I don't know if this is going to ruin the board or not, but you can dampen the back of whatever you're working on. And it might, I mean, for paper anyways, it works. It might flatten out a bit. That's funny. I should have taped it down. It's all right. We're going to wing it anyways. Um, do we want to put a little green in here? I think we do. How about... I have this mud mixture over here. Can you see my palette? Yeah. Of all this green. I don't clean my palette because there's always all this fabulous mixed color, which is usually these two greens. My um, cobalt green and my sap green, both M grams, um, mixed together over here, usually with a touch of yellow to like get that olivey color, which is perfect for this little piece. I just kind of splash it in here and there. What do you think about that? I think that on one of my flowers, though, right there. That's a, supposed to be a flower. And maybe a little down here. How's that? Yeah, I like that. A little bit of, a little bit of greenery in the background, kind of lend some interest. I'm gonna. I don't have enough water. We're going to be naughty. We're going to splash droplets. And anywhere they land that you don't like it, and you don't have to do this part if you don't like splatters, just mop them up right quick. If they're too dark or too prominent, just tap them with a paper towel like so. And we got a little bit of green going on. I dig it. Okay. We're all done with this brush. I'm going to... This time I'm going to wash it out pretty good. Give it a little squeeze. This this baby holds a lot of water. I'll set him aside. Stay. I want to go ahead and grab my Pencil Neptune round number eight. This is my favorite, favorite paintbrush on the planet. I use it almost every, every day. Um, it does feel a little um, frazzled. I've had it for a couple of years now. Uh, but uh, we're gonna roll with it. I th I'm thinking I should maybe, maybe I should replace it. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any tips on how to revive your paintbrushes, because that'd be fun to know. Maybe, maybe Lindsay the Frugal Crafter knows. She's got all kinds of good information. All right, on to the bird. We're going to go ahead. This orange stuff that I have over here is um, Quinn Rust and Chinese Orange and Azo and Sienna all mixed together. It's basically mud brown. All right, I'm going to get that wet and tap in some, some of this Chinese. 
The Chinese is, cyan, is a sennelier color. Sennelier paints are beautiful. They're really nice paints. I highly recommend them. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. I think a little clean water, mostly dry brush, and dampen the area of his little frowny face around the beak. And then down like that. Dun, 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 dun. Like so. He's got a bit of a tood, this one. He's got a bit of an attitude. As the grumpy birds tend to have. And I'm just tapping this in the dampened area. I'm going to let it just futz about in there and do what it wants. And I think, for fun, let's give it a little spritz. Dab, dab around the edges. And let that be for now. And I think I'm going to do a little bit. Oops, too much water, as always. I'm very water heavy when I work. Unless I'm purposefully going, um, uh, wet into dry, which I do do when I want more control, which I do do, <laughs> jeez. Um, but this time I'm not looking to have control. I'm going to put a little yellow in there. A little bit of azo yellow. Whoa. There we go. And then I think. I think, I think, I think, I think, I like this, this neutral tint because it's got a purple bias. So I'm going to put it over here in purple and make a little purpley gray color. Maybe add a little bit of cobalt deep. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Just, just play with your colors. It's so much fun to just mix them and see what will happen. A little water and then kind of just... Splash in his little attitude feathers. There's a little bit of his shock of gray. I don't know that he's actually this color. Oops. But um, I'm digging it. I could put the reference for real quick, I suppose. Maybe I'll do that in a hot second here. Like I usually pop my kin my uh, reference photos up on my Kindle, but I believe it's in the bedroom next to the bed, which is not a bad thing. But I was crushing the candy last night before bed. Bad habit to get into, by the way. And um, yeah, that's where I left it. And just there we go. And we're going to probably get in here with some ink over the top of him to make him really pop off the page. Because I can't help myself, you guys. Mixed media. It's my thing. Let's block that area. There we go. The board's getting a little dry. Starting to dry. Yeah. I'm digging it. Okay. Let's let him dry a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and grab some of this are they permanent permanent alizarin crimson alizarin crimson? Or is it just alizarin? Permanent alizarin. It's an emgram color. I'll put it right here. It's a deep, deep color. I want it for the flowers to um, get in here and make them pop a bit. Just drop it in. Right 
And I don't want the flowers to be the focal point at all. I just want them to be um, highly suggested. Let's see. But I want him to really pop and sparkle. Pop and sparkle, little buddy. Ooh, I like that bleed. That's nice. Add a little water and see if this will bleed too. Yay! I like that. That's nice. What's that one? Kind of popping off the page now, isn't it? All right, let's let's dampen this dude. He's um, coming in hot off the page over here. Action right there. Grab our color and just drop it in. This is that blizzard and crimson mixed in with the mud on the palette. Kind of mutes it out a little bit. Makes it a little. And you just drop it in almost straight and let it bleed. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. I'm gonna pull that up close so you guys can see. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's bleeding. Wish my other loop was on. Silly thing. Silly, silly thing. I'm going to drop some more over here. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. There. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. Okay. We have another pretty big flower up here. Right there. Kind of flops and folds on this side. And then there is a little stain on the inside that we're going to try to avoid. Sorry, sorry. It's 80 something degrees and I have the window open. Sorry, guys. Motorcycle season, you know. Any guys out there ride the motorcycles? I'm too scared. I'm a danger to society and myself on those kinds of things. So I don't even bother. Not ideal listening when you're um, trying to record a video. That's so cool. I love that it does that. Do the other one up here. It's so satisfying. It is completely satisfying to watch paint move on paper. I do not know why. Anybody else feel deep satisfaction watching paint move on paper? <laughs> or bored? I think it. Let's soften that out a little bit. Get a little blot. There we go. That's nice. I like it. Okay. Not sure what I have going on over here. I think I want some Quinn. For this flower that's peeking in and kind of muted in the background. A little tap. There we go. Good, 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 good. Okay. Like I said, I don't want the flowers to be the focal point of the painting. I want them to be suggested and be kind of muted in and in the background. I splattered paint on there. Good thing we splattered earlier. It blends right in. <laughs> okay. Next thing we're going to do is put his little branch in. Now, the last time I put his branch in, I went in with ink right away. But I'm not going to do that this time. Because this is too wet. I'm going to go in and we're going to create a nice, a nice little brown. We've got Quinn. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of... Put a nickel in there. Move around. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Let that be the way it is for right now. And then come in here. Delineate a branch. Kind of dry on wet paper. And 
using the tip. This is my um, Let's Make Art Classic round number four. I follow the Let's Make Art channel. They are a fantastic group of people and they are incredibly entertaining and super education uh, or educational. They have a bunch of, Sarah Cray has a bunch of videos on painting. Uh, she just started um, with gouache too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, their team is really fun to, to follow and watch. I recommend them highly. If you want to spend the afternoon with people that are going to make you laugh and brighten your day, they're them. They are definitely them. Okay, let me get a little darkness. We need some darkness. We'll finish with this color first, and then go in on top with some darker, darker shades. My shadow's getting the best of me. And it's a twig. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if it wobbles and wibbles, that's that's fine. Technical terminology: wobbling and wibbling. That's right. Happens all the time in my life. And there, get some more. Pull it down and around. I can barely see my drawing anymore. Oh, we get it. Which is also okay to do because this is my art and I can find fun. Okay, let's get a little, let me put a little bit of this mixture in with our brown and darken it up a little bit. Once again, this is um, my purpley blues that I have going on over here. I'm going to put it over here with these and make some dark brown. Basically mud, you guys. And just play with it until you get a color that you like. Maybe add a little red, a little quin red. Gives it a little rusty color. Dig it. And I'm going to just drag my brush, the, the fine hairs of the brush, over the top of the branch. Do a little dot 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 there. And a little right there. Um, how's that looking? Yeah, I dig it. Okay. Okay, she says. Again and again and again. Uh, darkness there. Make that pop off the page a bit. And drag it in. Oops. And just kind of blend that out. A little bit of rough texture on your branch isn't a bad thing either. And like I said, we're probably going to come in over the top of this with some some pen and really delineate a little water. The chaos that I have going on. There's a little knobby thing there. That up there. Yep. And this branch going down this way. Ta-da! Okay. We have a couple more. Not so prominent branches over here. that. There's that little section. All right, let's get his face pulled out of there a little bit. About, hold on, I'm gonna go get the reference for that. Oh, dark spot right there. I don't know if I'm digging that. Am I digging that? I'll let it be what it is. 
Hold on, I'm gonna go get my reference photo real quick before we dive into his little cell. Okay, guys. We have our reference photo. And I don't adhere to them strictly at all. I don't. It's uh, Pixabay. If, it, if you don't, you're new here, you probably haven't heard, but I do spout off about Pixabay quite a bit. They are a um, royalty-free website for you to utilize reference photos for your art and creations and whatnot. They have other things too, it's just I just use the reference photos. Um, what do I want to do here? He's, he's a little more gray than I want him to be. Let's add some purple. Let's add a little dark purple. Maybe not dark. Maybe just suggestions. Purple here and there. Shadows and blend is a little there. And then some, just some over here. And these feathers that are going out this way. He's all poofed up. He's riled. He's riled, y'all. Someone got under his little skin. Tweaked his day. Okay, go ahead. Drop in a little bit of purple in his eyes. Like that. I think touch of neutral tint dropped in as well. And then I'm just gonna let those dry like that for now. And we'll come back to them and make a pop. And we can zoom in. You guys don't need to see my palette necessarily. Scooch it over. There we go. There we go. Da -da -da. And I got a little bit of neutral tint on the tip of my brush here. I am going to go in and make his little frowny face. Like so. And a little beak. Like that. There. Yes, perfect. Perfect little frowny face. A little heavy hands on the end there. It's okay. You can fix it. We can always fix it. Alright. And then a little burnt sienna in with our mud here and just some little flicks flicks of feather. And up from his little schnoz there, and then there's just like some over right here, and a little, little poof, poofy flicks of feather. Let's see. Which gives him the, the appearance of having a serious attitude. How's he looking? Saucy? Does he look saucy? I think so. Little attitude. There's more of that color. Mm -hmm. Too wet. Not the effect I was going for. There we go. That's better. Be a little brighter. Oh, that's too much. 
Not so far out. Mm, more traffic for you guys. Sorry. I'm really sorry if that bothers people. Um, not much I can do about it. It's too warm to close the window. And it's not quite um, warm enough to turn on the AC, which is, you know find balance. I don't really care for running the AC and breathing all that air conditioned air, which is probably something I'm going to need to get over eventually when the temperatures hit the 90 degree mark and I feel like they're melting. This is also swooshed out easily. How's he looking? Saucy? He looks a little saucy. Violet and Quinn Violet and I'm mixing them together just for a little bit of maybe we should put some blue in there too what do you think I think I'll put in a little bit of cobalt blue deep Ooh, yeah there we go you guys can see that off just off the edge there nice nice Give it a little dampness, a little too, a little too much. I'm just kind of still too much. A little wet down. Blot, 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 soften that up a little bit. Let that down on this side. It's got a little patch of like almost pure white fur right there, but I got carried away. We're gonna leave this alone though, because it kind of glows a little bit. And I think we're gonna go ahead and do these little feathers here that kind of roll back from him a little bit like that. Like so. And a little bit of purpley grayness right here behind his eye. On the other side, but not terribly dark. And then his cap. His cap is a hot mess. In my mind. Let's see. A little bit of licking here and there. To Really make it pop. 
blob in some darkness. Very much. Okay. Okay. You're looking pretty cute. Alright, we're gonna do his little feet next with the same purpley color. Continuity. Because we are probably gonna get in here. I have out a brown Faber Castell pen, but I think I may switch it out for the blues. You know, because because makes sense. He's very purpley blue cast to him, and it just feels right. There's that little leg. Now do this little leg. And we're walking. And drop that in. Using just the tip of the brush, like the you can see little fine hairs at the end. And just kind of dragging them around on the edges of where the drawing appears to be, because I kind of lost a little bit of it. Those little feet and leg situations. Can't leave them without those. <coughs> and I'm not really caring for that little splotch of pure white paper right there. Kind of annoying me. I'm going to do that a little bit. And block. And then the board is allowing for a lot of texture to show through. I don't think it's probably meant to be scrubbed on very much. Perhaps. Okay, I got carried away on the flowers, so I'm going to attempt to clean off this gouache pile that I have right here. I don't remember what brand of gouache this is at all. But we're going to use it to make a little bit of pink. A really soft, muted pink. And we're going to come in on these flowers and tone them way down. Because, yeah, I got a wicked carried away with all that beautiful color. This section here could be toned down. And over here. Could be toned down. And I'm a very mixed media artist, you guys. I, I if you haven't been here for a while, you may not know that. I will get out just about any art supply to make my painting look the way I want it to. Um so don't be afraid to to experiment with all your stuff and whatnot that you have floating around in your space. I know that I have things that I haven't touched, like my ink, my India inks. If I wasn't doing the Inktober challenge for the year, which by the way, I'm doing the Inktober challenge this year, um, the Inktober 52 weekly challenge, um, I'm behind the eight ball for sure, but um, still doing it. I haven't given up. And uh, that's the only reason I'm touching those inks right now is because of that. All right, that's going to have to be toned down a lot because I'm starting to work up the, the surface of the board a bit too much. Do we like it? Oh, yeah, that looks pretty. Okay, cool. I dig it. And then this one I'm just going to wiggle in a little soft. This right there. Just wiggle it in. Another little bit there. And then this petal here can be softened. 
And the gouache, when you mix it with your watercolor, um, if you mix it on your watercolor palette, make sure to wipe it off when you're done painting because it will contaminate your other pure watercolors. You're not supposed, it's not ideal. It's not that you're not supposed to. It's just not ideal to put your gouache in the same palette as your watercolor paints because you can inadvertently dip in here and then dip in, in your, your other wells without thinking because you're carried away painting. Um, which I have done and had to clean out my wells and or start over like from scratch because I've completely decimated a pot of um, color with the opaque white of the gouache, which was not intentional and uh, kind of ruins the flow of your paintings, making them gouache instead of watercolor. I'm kind of digging the petals now. Hopefully all that made sense. Um, ideally, you bring your watercolor to your your gouache. You like rinse your brush, make sure it's all clean from the, the white of the gouache. Oops, just splatter everywhere. And then go into whatever color you want and bring that to the, the spot where you're working. A little bit of water and a lot of gouache. This is a tough little paintbrush too. And just drop it on. And you can clean the surface of the paint off too with a little bit of water. I've done that as well. I'm not terribly picky about it, but a lot of artists are. A lot of their, uh, those out are the artists out there can be a mite picky about those kinds of things. Well, that's if you want to keep your palette pretty pure watercolor. There. That looks nice. I kind of dig the softness of that. Yeah. Hmm, I got the let things get a little too heavy. Got a little heavy handed. Some pure white on this. Not as light as I want it to be. See, it's drying really dark pink stone. See how those dried kind of chalky? That's another gouache attribute. It can be a bit chalky. And if you don't like that matte, flat matte chalky look on your paintings, um, don't do gouache. <laughs> Just say no. How's that looking? That's all right. I might have a part of this one we'll carry away over here too. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. I like it. Right, I'm messing around too much. Getting too carried away. I'm all done messing with the flowers. Unless I get in there with an ink pen, which is entirely possible. All right, let's grab some neutral tint. Uh, pretty dry on the brush. Using just the tip. I'm gonna get his little saucy eye in there. There. Okay. All right. 
Oh, what do we want to do? Is that... Are we feeling him? I think we are. I think... Oh, uh, where'd that dark blue go? There you are. Is that an indigo, I think this is? Oh, indanthrin, blue. But I'm gonna go ahead and... Put on some of those outer feathers back here that are more prevalent, like so. Right there. And a little bit here. Not too much. Maybe some dots instead of dashes. Another motorcycle. Woohoo! Super exciting. Mm -hmm. A little darkness under his eye there. A little bit down here. Good. Good, good, good. A couple dots there. And really make this whole cap of his pop a bit. I don't want to mess with it too much. I'll come back in tomorrow morning after I, after I take a good look at it. I'll give my eyes a rest before I edit the video. and I'll pop back in if I make any major changes. But for the most part, this is pretty much done. I mean... Does he convey a, a layer of saucy attitude? I think he does. A little irked. A little irked. Maybe the kid's got him stuff. Made life difficult for him. Hmm? As they tend to do. A little suggestion of his little foots. Okay. There. I really have been wanting to do a real time tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoy having a real time tutorial once in a while on the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you prefer time lapses, real time videos, or if you'd rather like scoot on over to Patreon and do the real time videos that we're doing over there. Um, once a month we do, uh, oh, I want a lighter color there. Once a month we do, this might be too bright. That's too bright. I don't like it. Uh, real time tutorial on whatever the theme is for the month. We get together, well, we don't get together, but I will do a um, full real time tutorial for you guys to follow along with and Provide the PDF, another motorcycle, for your tracing pleasure. If you're at all drawing challenged, they are super handy to have. So I will provide those when necessary. Not for everything, because um, sometimes we're going to draw too. We're going we're gonna to draw, we're going to paint, we're going to do the gouache sometimes, watercolor sometimes, whip out the pastels and attempt a, a pastel drawing. Yeah, it's, it's all good, clean fun. I should stop by and hang out. I'd really love to see it. Yeah. Okay, how's he looking? Delightful. Delightfully annoyed. Can't even help this on so. I need a little touch of like gold on his little legs to make them like pop because they feel like they're disappearing in, in, in the fray of it all. And then this guy, go along and really just get in here and scribble around on the branches. 
give them some texture, drag the pen around on its side, let it do what it wants a little bit. Twig down there. This twig comes down like so. There's a little seed popping there. No. That just gives it a little interest. I'm going to give this a spin because it's easier to do the lines going this way. Let it look all novel and novel. There's a little seed pumping over there. Put it down like that. And through on into there. There's another seed pod in there. Kind of got lost in the flower, but that's all right. We don't mind. We'll be all right. And if you guys get part way through this and you're like, I don't, I don't like it, just it's a piece of paper. Throw it away. Start over. Try again. That's how we learn. Do and do and do and do. That is the best way to learn is by doing. And if you don't like adding pen to your piece, don't add pen. Um. Just, you know, use your paintbrush and paint and for your fine details, just go in with a dry paint on dry paper and a nice fine point and a little bit of control and you can get all these details with just a paintbrush. And that is a challenge for me to do that because I like my focal point to really pop off the page. So using just paint is something that I'm working on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There is the mess on the table. It's currently 9.40, well, 35. And uh, yeah, we're going to call this one done. I really enjoyed painting with you guys and I hope to see you in the next video. Let's give you a little, little close up of this hotness. There's a little fluffy hotness. He's a little wonky, isn't he? It's like he poofed up on one side more than the other. <laughs> but I still love him. I think he's cute. And I think how the flowers turned out with a little bit of gouache on them. Yeah. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.